Hello Pisces, hello Pisces, this is Adrian Igo, Capricorn Tigress of Astrology, A Look Inside, and I am, I'm trying not to be too close to the camera, I'm always, I always, I feel like I've got a, a, a good amount of distance between me and the camera, but then when I look at the videos, it's like I'm right up on the darn thing, it really is like, I can't seem to find the right amount of distance. To make it not seem like I'm right up on the camera. So I hope this is going to be perfect this time. So Pisces, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with you guys uh, for the month of February 2019. So as you are a Pisces, of course, the big thing for you, Pisces, has been for quite some time the fact that you've got Neptune and Chiron in your first house of Pisces. And I've, I've gotten into a lot of hot water with Pisces <laughs> over the last few months because I've been, you know, calling out the confusion and delusion of having Neptune in the first house. It's just, it's hard to see when Neptune is in the first house. And, and I know because I've just, like I've said to you guys many a time now, I've got some Pisces in my first house. I've got Capricorn, Aquarius, all of Aquarius. And about three degrees of Pisces in my first house so I've experienced what this Neptune in the first house does and I'm gonna tell you firsthand about what it did to me I ended up marrying a guy who I thought loved me and um, I dated him for five years all overall I mean we had played Mafia Wars on Facebook together and we flirted we I used to be the Mafia boss in in one of the groups but anyway, five years of friendship down the drain. I don't quite understand what happened over the last two years of marriage. But a lot of it has to do with this Neptune. I'm sure that either he felt deluded by me or I, that I was an illusion or a delusion or a lie. And I definitively feel that he was a delusion or an illusion or a lie. So I want you guys to be uh, cautious of having Neptune and Chiron in the first house. I mean, I'm not saying you guys are victims, and I'm not even saying I'm a victim. I'm just saying it's hard for us to avoid what we can't see. And with Neptune in the first house, it makes it hard for us to see. Like, see it. It's right up on us before we can see it. If, if that makes sense. <sighs> And it seems like it's hard for others to see us. Like they, it's hard for people to see Pisces. They might see that image of you because it's the first house, right? And make a snap decision based on that first house, Pisces, Neptune, or Chiron. And not really know about any of the rest of you. Like, what else is going on with you? And that's the whole thing about Neptune. People will make snap judgments, really misconstrued judgments. Um, you might have felt some misunderstanding um, from others or just that they don't get you. Like, God, why doesn't anyone get me, right? That kind of feeling. And you might really feel that a lot this month because uh, Mercury and the sun are now in your solar 12th house of Aquarius and so you're feeling that you're feeling uh, a lot of that hidden buried deep inside internal stuff and I guess this is the month where you're supposed to feel that all that deep buried inside internal stuff now, it's got Aquarius there in, in the 12th house. And for some reason, I don't think Aquarius likes being in the 12th house. Only because that's a natural house of Pisces, which is your house. And um, 
I'm sure Neptune would like being in the 12th house and Pisces would like being in the 12th house and maybe Jupiter would like being in the 12th house. But I don't know how much the Sun and Mercury like being in the 12th house. And that's because they probably feel as though they can't shine or they can't communicate the way that they want to for some reason or another. It could be because, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a relationship that you're in that you feel that you're stifled or that you can't speak or talk out or shine the way you want to shine and stand out and speak. That could definitely be an issue. And I'm wondering, because right now you st st shining is important, I think, in a way. Actually, there's two reasons for it. One, Jupiter and Venus are in your solar 10th house right now. Okay, so having Jupiter and Venus sitting up at the top of your chart like that in the area of ambition and career and your reputation. Well, that that Jupiter and Venus is what people are seeing when they see you or what they think of when they think of, you now. they're either thinking of like that Neptune Chiron person. In fact, the fact that these are so vastly different makes me believe that when people are dealing with you they're seeing one or, or of two people you i'm not saying you have multiple personalities a lot of pisces do but there may be two types of distinct pisces operating from this setup there is the pisces who has that neptune uh, you know the chart ruler basically the pisces rising person and uh, Chiron there in the first house, it's sad. Neptune and Chiron in the first house is not happy and jovial. It, it might, you might feel a little bit artistic and dreamy and otherworldly with Neptune in the first house and creative. I'm thinking maybe you might have creative ideas, but with Chiron in the first house, it's really going to limit the feeling of joy that would come out of the first house. You see what I mean? But conversely, Jupiter up in the 10th house with Venus of all things up in the 10th house well that's very happy that's very happy and Jupiter's in uh, Sagittarius which is its own home it loves being in Sagittarius so it's it loves being there but most importantly there is probably nothing more beneficial to a career than having Jupiter and Venus in the 10th house at the same time. So I don't know what you're doing in your career. Um, but I would say if you've got some ideas, some dreams, some hopes uh, for your career, this by far is the month to hone your career. This is, this is your career month. This is... Um, well, not even month, but year. I hope that you've really been focusing on that Jupiter in your 10th house um, for 2019. I, I, uh, don't miss this opportunity. I mean, wow. This is a once in a 12 year opportunity and Jupiter sitting up in that 10th house. So your career and your reputation and your image can really be on an upswing right now, really. Um, and people would see you as wise, like wise and benevolent and full of wisdom, educated, um, kind, generous, joyful, happy, positive, optimistic. These are the vibes you're giving off. Even with the Sun and Mercury in the 12th house in, in uh, Aquarius, it still means that in your deep inner self, in your deep inner thoughts, in your deep inner mind, in your sleep, in your subconscious mind, that you're thinking innovative, creative, unique thoughts, probably genius ideas going on in that 12th house I would even try to write down any crazy dreams or thoughts or like if you suddenly have this idea of an invention 
or something like that. Well, that's not a fluke. Write that down. You might come back to that later and find out that invention was a real solid idea. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, especially with the sun and Mercury sitting in the 12th house. You're dreaming this stuff, maybe even daydreaming this stuff. Just super creative ideas. Now, conversely, if you get it, you know, you start thinking you're being visited by aliens and stuff like that, then I, I need you to stop and go and make an appointment with your psychiatrist because <laughs> the sun and Mercury in the 12th house could roll nervous breakdowns. And Neptune in the first is not helping that. So I want you to be aware of that. Okay? And I've said this with other people about not getting into debates with people, but whenever Jupiter's in Sag at home, that can be a possibility, and you've got it on the 10th, but I think it's a much more positive place for you. That is just a golden child. I mean, really, with Jupiter and Venus and Sag in the 10th, see your career really taking off. I hope you're taking advantage of it, because you can really make some amazing strides with Jupiter and Venus in your 10th house. It's absolutely wonderful. Now, you do have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. And they are falling in your solar 11th house. Now, Capricorn is the natural ruler of the 10th. So, uh, in a way, it's happy that Jupiter and Venus are in the 10th house too. But the problem is, Capricorn has Saturn in it right now. And it's at home. It's, it's ruling everything for everybody, everywhere. Saturn is one of those kind of planets, and Pluto is right there with it in Capricorn. So, you know, I would say that with Saturn in the 11th house, this would be a time to really think about your goals and your ambitions and your aspirations and your hopes and your dreams and what it is you want to do. And uh, I would even look at how I could get more involved in groups. I've talked to several people with this setup, either Pluto or Saturn, sitting in that 11th house. And when you see that, that's where you're seeing responsibility amongst others, usually friends, because the 11th house is the house of friends. But it can indicate some level of responsibility in the area of friendship, in the area of groups, um, organizations, and clubs. It could be Facebook, Instagram, tw Twitter, Snapchat. It can be anything like that. But see, with Pluto there as well as Saturn, it definitely is giving off the vibe of the authority. Someone who is in power of like their their social milieu. Uh, you're in, in power or control of like your groups and your friends and and all the things that you would do with your groups and the friends. And I, I want to say this, with having Saturn and Pluto in the 11th house, it means that it's equally opposing Cancer down in your solar 5th house. And so your love life might be taking a hit from what's going on with Saturn and Pluto on the other side of the chart. And so I'm wondering if you're someone who's felt this weirdness with your relationships or in or maybe even a loss of a romance or or struggling with a romance um, because of this Saturn Pluto on one side of the chart opposing this fifth house of love romance you this might be taking um, coming out with children because the fifth house can rule children and the north node is there in that fifth house but Saturn and Pluto, which are heavies, are opposing the children. So I'm wondering how that could play out. I would love to hear um, some stories of, of how that might have affected some people. But this North Node in Cancer in the fifth house, it's telling me that what you're supposed to be doing has a lot to do with either children or fun or, um, well, fifth house things. It's like entertainment and fun and parties and clubbing and um, taking chances and playing the lotto and playing like scratchies and bingo and all those types of things. Um, 
going out on dates. Um, it's very fifth house. Dancing in general, fifth house. Um, entrepreneurship, so owning your own, start like your own business, very fifth house. But remember, I, I don't feel comfortable with the idea of anyone starting a business when Saturn is opposing it. I would wait till next year. But then, of course, it might not have the emphasis in the fifth house. So I would weigh that pro and con. You know, just make sure it's not a really heavy aspect the day you open your business. If you're going to go entrepreneur with Saturn in the tenth house, opposing the fifth house of entrepreneurship. Now, there is Uranus and Mars in that second house. And Uranus in the second house, to me, is always an indication of upheaval of some kind. And Mars in the second house is also the same. But it's a little bit better because Mars in the second house it's just indicated, indicative of action, actual activity in generating money. This is the area of focus, the second house of money. And with Mars there, there's actual production and activity of this money, hopefully your money and comfort and, you know, just what you can give to others and maybe even a, a urge to reach out and, and, and nurture others or take care of others, especially with the North Node and Cancer in the fifth house and Jupiter up in the tenth. Very benevolent, very generous and benevolent, and it's coming across probably very much so. I'm sure people are starting to sense that there's this, this goodness or light within you because that Jupiter and that Venus in the 10th house and even that Neptune in the first house is making you come off very light and benevolent I believe so as I look at this this is pretty much my reading for you guys for the month of February because I you know I doing them just a little different than I used to do them and I just the one thing I would say is that I'm just going to show you this. I don't know if you can see I've scratched and scribbled all over, but do you see how everything is over here around this on this on this side of the chart like that? See that? The only thing over on the other side is this north node in the fifth house. If I cover that up, everything is here, starting from like the tenth house and down to the second house. This is whenever I see all the planets over on one side like that. That tells me right away that this is a time where you need to be working on two things. Your career and ambitions and your goals and dreams. And you, really you, focus on you, improving you, making you happy, finding the you that is you, discovering who you are healing your own wounds and pains about how you look and how you feel or how other people see you or, how, or the image you see in the mirror or if you're pretty or not pretty or if you feel pretty because right now you got Jupiter and Venus in the, in the tent I would take advantage of this time to heal my individual persona and the image that I give off because that's what's being highlighted when your ruler Neptune is transiting your first house it's saying get to know yourself take the mask off who are who am I um, how can I heal whatever wound I have in this house of me in this house of my body in this house of myself in this house of my ego what are you healing Pisces What are you healing in your first house? Some of y'all are healing. I would take this time to do that. I'll also say this before I go. What I had said about that Saturn and Pluto in the 11th house, any friendship, group, club, organization, association, 
like Rotary Club, Elks Club, women's clubs, whatever, anything that you get involved in like that, even online groups and clubs might even pertain to this, but they're going to be long lasting because Saturn is there. All friendships built right now are long lasting, maybe for the rest of your life. So definitely reach out to others. It might seem interminably hard because Saturn's there and it restricts us and it makes everything so hard and it might even make you come off as a little hard but I'm telling you once you establish yourself in these groups you're going to be seen as the authority in these groups and you're going to begin to wield some power because Pluto is there and Pluto is going to be sitting in this house for ages so do take advantage of this okay and don't forget to do your north node in that fifth house Remember, fifth house, children, love, romance, gambling, taking chances, and entrepreneurship, and dancing, and parties, and all the good stuff, right? Do it up, can't, uh, Pisces, do it up. This is your time to take advantage of all of that good stuff while the North Node is in Cancer in your solar fifth house. And with that, I actually am going to go. We've hit over 20 minutes because I'm just sitting here talking about your chart. And the more I talk, the more I see. It's amazing. <laughs> but I just want to say to you guys, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing my videos. And get the word out. Let everyone know, uh, you know, what I do here. Oh, and I opened up a Patreon account and with that there are different levels that you guys can go and see if you want to participate in. I got things there from $5 to $50 and um, everyone is invited to go to my Patreon. I'll put the link below so that you can see, um, have access to that. And I also want to invite all of you wonderful Pisces to come and join me at my group on Facebook at astrology a look inside um, it would be facebook.com slash groups slash astrology a look inside and you can find our facebook page at us facebook.com slash astrology a look inside okay well it's been a pleasure talking to you pisces thank you so much for your time and just all that you do you have a wonderful february and a wonderful Valentine's Day. Much love and light to all. Bye now.